So the next one is interesting. Men have a faster metabolism than women, which protects against weight gain. Yeah, how much truth do you think is in that? Well, the doctor says uh, it's certainly true that men have a higher metabolism than women by about 300 calories a day. But while it used to be true that women gain more weight as they age, men have done a remarkable job catching up in recent years. So this higher metabolism doesn't automatically protect against weight gain. Men need to keep an eye on calorie intake too if they want to stop piling on the pounds. Yeah, women have a higher natural higher body fat percentage. I don't know if that enters into this, but... Yeah, so whether it's 300 calories or less or more, the proverbial beer gut is more or less the result of eating the extra carbs. So the more insulin secretion, because that insulin hormone is going to convert those carbs to fat and keep them locked there as fat. So you're saying that beer is okay, but just the carbs that you usually eat with your beer is probably bad? Yeah, if you eat zero-carb beer, that would be the best. (laughs) (laughs) They're probably going to invent that someday. They're getting down to that now, you know, with some of these new light beers they've got on the market. 64 calories for one of them? Yeah, I guess so. How about the uh, nuclear penguin? You, uh, <laughs> did you have one of those today yet? The highest alcohol content of all beers, right? <laughs> 32%. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Sam Adams, I guess, came out with a, a 27% one, and it was banned in quite a few states, apparently. <laughs> Way too toxic. But the alcohol acts as a carbohydrate too, so you know, right. watch out for that in addition to it not being actually good for your liver. Yeah, those empty calories are the killers. Mm-hmm. So when you diet, your metabolism slows down so much that you plateau and can't lose any more weight. Well, this is probably one of the most common ones, right, that people use in, in their explanation as to why they're not losing weight. I mean, it really can be frustrating. You're on this supposedly great diet and then you just hit a plateau and you can't seem to lose anymore. So what is the reason there? Yeah, people get to the point where they're not losing weight, they get burned out, and then they just slip right back into their old habits because, you know, what's the point? Yes. And then it becomes even harder to get back to the path that they were on when they were losing weight. Yeah, even though they know that going back to their old eating habits is certainly not going to do them any good. Right. But it's the most, it's like the comfort zone, you know, it's what they're familiar with, what's emotionally nourishing in some a uh, dysfunctional way because obviously being overweight and being obese is not going to generate good feelings about self a lot of the time. Right. Because everyone really deserves to be their ideal weight. They really deserve an optimal lifestyle of health and nutrition. And just being your ideal person, if you will, is so important to living a good life. Yeah. And it's hard for people when they do hit these plateaus, but apparently the metabolism change when you diet, and here you have to ask, what is the diet they're on, right? Because different diets cause different things. But the doctor says here, this accounts for only about 30% of calorie reduction. For example, say you eat 1,000 calories a day rather than the typical 1940 consumed by healthy women. Your metabolism can be expected to slow by about 330 calories So you're still cutting out 670 calories, the equivalent to losing a pound a week rather than a pound and a half. Mm -hmm. And then for dieters of all ages, plateaus are almost always caused by one or two other factors to do with calorie intake rather than usage. It's either down to a terrible diet, which works by causing mostly water loss for the first few weeks, then falters once the excess water has gone, or it's because the dieter is inadvertently eating more calories than the diet intends. And then, of course, she admonishes people to write down everything you eat for a few days and see (laughs) where the extra calories are creeping in. Yeah, that's a lot of fun, writing down everything you eat and keeping track of calories. Mm Mm-hmm. Counting them in a very obsessive-compulsive fashion. Yeah, that just uh, makes me want to chew myself. Not to mention getting out the calculator with this big chart she has here about how to calculate your daily calorie intake. No, I don't think this is a good idea. I think this is how people hit plateaus and get frustrated and quit because they start having to count or they think they have to count. And what's interesting is mine came out to be 1,800 and then you get this number of 1,800. Then you would multiply that. Say I'm just sedentary, which I'm really not. But you multiply that times 1.5 to get my daily intake supposedly and it's 2,700 calories a day. Well, I'm eating around 2,000 calories a day and I'm maintaining... 175 pound weight, which is about five pounds from what I normally would have. I'm usually around 170. So something is really off there because... I was actually told there'd be no math in this podcast. 
Okay, did your brain just fry? So I'm lost, yeah. You're supposed to have a calculator handy. <laughs> oh, yeah, forgot. But it just goes to show that this number crunching is is itself a myth. Yeah. And there's actually a great study that everyone that's really adamant about this calorie theory of weight loss, you know, nutritionists and dietitians need to look at because it covers all the myths about this calorie theory of weight loss from a biochemical perspective. Yeah. It was titled, A Calorie is a Calorie Violates the Second Law of Thermodynamics. And it was in Nutrition Journal. I wonder how the nutritionist took that one <laughs> when that came out for publication. It was in 2004. Yeah. But they're basically saying if you have the same calorie diets, you're going to get different levels of metabolism, a burning of that energy because of the effect of certain macronutrients on your, your body. So this goes to all the studies that Atkins and Sears have referenced about isocaloric diets and how people lose the most weight significantly on ones that are lower carb. Yeah. And that just goes to, they didn't address the insulin factor, uh, but rather the gluconeogenesis that happens as a result of not eating as many carbs. So anyway, that gets into the nitty gritty of that. Yeah, so if someone hits a plateau, what would you do? I mean, what would you recommend? Well, I would really look at what I am eating, the kind of foods that I'm eating for one, to make sure that I'm eating optimally. And there's a great book for that. HealthyMindFitBody.com has oh, yeah. uh, our ebook and audiobook for this, this very issue to get you on the right lifestyle, to look at the types of foods for maintaining your optimal weight through the rest of your life rather than just getting down to your weight and then somehow trying to maintain that by slowly gravitating back to your original eating habits. Because, you know, I guess 95% of the people that go on diets and lose the weight end up gaining the weight back. Yeah. So this is a huge problem 